Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Noah's Window, another episode of Noah's Window. My name is Daniel Mahana, this is my wife Rachel. Hello. And we just wanted to, uh, we're so excited to be guests on here and share some of our thoughts and heart with you um, over a few episodes. But before we get into what we want to talk about today, we want to just give you a little bit of context about who we are, in case you don't know. <laughs> um, we've been on staff for, at New Spring for 10 years, and um, we originally started in student ministry and got to uh, be a part of and witness a really a lot of great things over the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, and then just recently moved into a role here um, at the end of last year um, to be a groups pastor and help with getting people connected in a community um, and also helping with starting point in our college ministry. So anyways, we're really excited about um, just sharing our heart with you. We have four kids, yep. um, nine-year-old boy, a two -year seven-year-old yes. seven girl, girl, a five-year-old boy, and a two-year-old girl, yes. Tobias, Chloe, Nehemiah, and Lydia. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a crazy season right now for us, mm -hmm. but it's fun. Mm -hmm. We've been married for almost 15 years. I'm 35, Rachel, I'll be 36 in a, in a few months. Rachel's 37. Um, she's older. I'm married up in many ways. It means um, I'm wiser. It's true. And so, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of who we are. And so um, we just, uh, Mary Alice said that, hey, we want you to just come and like share whatever you want. You can talk about groups, you can talk about anything. But we just, uh, after talking through it, we thought we'd share just some of our, over a few episodes, some of our favorite scriptures with you. Mm -hmm. um, we just love uh, what Mary Alice and Mark and have been doing with Noah's Window and just sharing their heart with you. And so we wanted to just talk about some of the scriptures that have meant a lot to us on our faith journey, but also as a family, as a couple, um, in ministry, and how we've implemented those verses or put into practice in our life or just what they've meant for us and how they've shaped our faith. So, um, or decisions we've made in our family. So that's what we thought we'd do. And so we'd start with, we thought today we would start with Rachel's, which, what we call a life verse. Um, I don't know if you have a life verse. We grew up, you know, you find a life verse, like you find a verse in the Bible that means a lot to you or you feel like defines you well. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's no right way to do it. I don't know. If that's just how we grew up learning it. Um, yeah. You don't have to have one. <laughs> um, but we were taught, hey, you should find a verse and call it your life verse. And so we found a verse, um, all, both found a verse. And usually like when we sign cards, mm -hmm. especially when we start dating, we'd write love letters to each other all the time. She'd like color them like a blank piece of paper. I'm she, an artist, okay? She would color the whole thing and then write me this book. It was amazing. I still have all them. And then she would sign her name along with this verse. And so, you know, this kind of, we would sign these verses on every card we wrote. It's changed over the years, but this is kind of her life this verse. I time. feel like it defines her really well and she lives it out really well. And I, I feel like I've learned a lot from her. Um, she's better at this verse than I am. So anyways, we thought we'd read it real quick and just talk about. Um, it's First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. So Rachel's going to read it to you. We got, we got our Bibles right here. Yep. Okay, um, it's always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Um, so it's a really short verse. I don't know if you've heard the verse. Maybe you've heard it in different um, versions before. Like mm -hmm. mine says, be joyful always, pray continuously, or maybe you've heard pray without, without ceasing. ceasing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, give thanks in all circumstances. Um, so we believe it's really important to understand like the context of a verse before you just kind of pluck one out. And so the letter of Thessalonians, there's two of them, um, pa Paul wrote them and he, he wrote them to, you know, he wrote letters to different churches to to address a lot of different things. This specifically, there was a lot going on. So I, one of the reasons he wrote this letter is because he kind of wanted to assure his friends that he loved them and cared for them. But also they were experiencing some persecution at the time. And he also kind of wanted to help ground them in some of the Christian doctrines and specifically in this section, he was talking about the coming of the Lord and Christ's return. Um, and also, I think he just wanted to encourage them to live holy lives and and even correct some of the weaknesses that he saw in the church. But when you understand the context of it, I think it helps. So when you think about, you know, in this section, he was talking about Jesus coming back. Um, he said, hey, be joyful always. And I think when you understand, like, we as followers of Jesus, we know that Christ can come back at any moment. And we should always live in anticipation of that mm -hmm. and always you know, like be sharing the gospel with the people, with people in our lives and, um, loving people the best that we can, being patient with our kids, being patient with one another, 
Um, and it's always a struggle in many areas and for many different reasons, but we have a reason to be joyful always, not just because of what God has done in our life and because we have the Holy Spirit and we've been saved, but because we know that Jesus is going to come back. And one day at the, in the end, he wins and we're going to be with him and we're going to be rescued and he's going to redeem the world and make everything right again. So the joy is having something to look forward to. So that's why. It's yeah. 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 You have it's something exciting. you have something to look for as no, it doesn't matter how bad your day gets. And yeah. many of us have had pretty terrible seasons and days. Mm-hmm. Um, we know that we can have a reason to be joyful, not, not happy necessarily, but we have joy and that's something that can never be taken away. Sometimes you can be joyful, but not happy. I don't know if that makes sense. I, I mean, I, I feel like that's true. Like sometimes I am experiencing joy, but I'm not necessarily like happy about what's going on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So anyways, that's, I be joyful always. And there's a reason one, because we have Jesus in our lives, <laughs> but also because he's coming back. We don't talk about that enough. You know, Pastor Mark talks about that a lot, which I love. Um, but I think we need to talk about that. And especially now more days, um, because, he is coming back soon. Um, so we have a reason to be joyful, but also we have this, ur- it adds urgency to our lives, um, which I think plays into what he said next, which means he said, pray continuously or pray without ceasing. Or what does your version say? Never stop praying. Never stop praying. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so for me, it was uh, growing don't up. Don't stop praying. Stop, don't stop it. <laughs> you know, I remember like as a kid, or even when we tell our kids like, would you stop that? Would you stop that? Well, we this one thing we can never, we can never tell them to stop doing it. Stop, never stop praying. Never stop. Um, uh, which, you know, silly, why would we? Uh, but anyways, <laughs> the, the point is, is that um, when I was growing up, I I've still sometimes struggle with prayer. Rachel's really good at it. She's just mm. natural at it. Um, <laughs> she, she is. Um, I always struggled like finding time to do it. I mean, I guess we you know we we all have the same amount of time. So I struggled creating a habit for it, but also just you know like in conversation and and making time for it and different things like that. Journaling. I've tried different ways to do it. Mm. But when you think about praying continuously or never stop praying or pray without ceasing, like sometimes that feels daunting. Like I got to just pray all the time. (laughs) Like what does that mean? How do I do that? I got to go to work. I got a family. I got things to do, you know. Um, But obviously it doesn't mean you got to just, you know, never pray throughout the day, like talk to God constantly out loud. Like that's not what that means. It just means creating this like mindset of like I'm going to just continuously lift things up to God specifically mean when you think about them. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that Rachel does that's helped me a lot, she's like, anytime someone comes to my mind, I try to pray for them in that moment. Like just, you know, real quick, lift up a prayer. It doesn't have to be out loud in my head, in my heart, or write it down. Um, I think that's been yeah, well, helpful for me. Yeah, it's something it's, that she does. It's like, it's like the Holy Spirit is like prompting you to pray for that person when they're, and you don't know what their person's going through. And God obviously brought them in your mind for a reason so yeah i'm just like and sometimes it's the same person over and over again and i'm like why does this person keep coming to my mind and i'm like okay i just need to pray for them because something's going on yeah and you never know and then and you may never know but or you might find out later that they were having a really bad day and at that time you were like oh i was totally praying for you and it's just like yeah, Super cool. that's that's true. Sometimes you find out later, like, wow, I was praying for them in that moment because they yeah. came to my mind. So often we think of people, maybe we see a memory on Facebook or we see someone that looks like them or just for some reason something made us think of them, mm-hmm. probably the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Pray for them in that moment. You know, all it takes is two seconds to just say, hey, I don't know what's going on in their life, but God, I lift them up to you. Pray you'd watch over them, help them, you know, help me to know if I can help them. Or maybe you can text them after you pray for them. If you have their number, I think that's helpful. And one, another reason, another way we try to pray continuously and that Rachel's really good at is like um, when someone texts us like, hey, we need some prayer. We try to stop in that moment and pray for them instead of saying, instead of just saying, I'll pray for you, yeah. uh, which is not bad. Like telling people, hey, we're going to be praying for you and I'm going to mm-hmm. pray for you. That's great. Like I, I'm not saying that's wrong, but sometimes we say that and then don't actually follow through we with forget. that. Or sometimes, we forget. Or sometimes I'll say like, when I think of you, I'll pray for you. Yeah, I like that. When because I think of you, I'll pray for you. I don't want to give them that's... like this false yeah. hope of I'm going to be praying for you and then I totally forget. Like yeah. when I actually do think, because you will, it'll come back to your mind. Like, I, yeah. I think that's just how God works. But, yeah. and then, you know. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really cool. And, um, 
Yeah, usually when someone now, because Rachel's really good at that, so I've tried to put that into practice in my own life. Like week when something comes up, and pe- someone's like, "Hey, can," uh, especially if I'm making phone calls and different things like mm-hmm. that. Someone's like, "Yeah, like write the, you know, I'd love for you guys to pray for this." So I'll be like, "Great, that's great. I'll write it down," and then I'll hang on the phone and I'll pray for them in that moment. So so I don't forget to do it later because I do talk to a lot of people and we meet a yeah. lot of people and sometimes I might forget if I don't write it down, but I know yeah. that I've prayed for them then which helps us to just constantly create a habit of praying throughout the day. Never stop praying. Um, so anyways, I think that's one thing that we can do, um, which Rachel's really good at, is just pray continuously. And one, things I w- one of the things I want to get good at is also praying for people in the moment. You know, when someone's like share something with you, um, we know people who do this in our lives, and it's not something we're very strong at. Um, it's just like, when someone says, hey, can you pray for me for this? Instead of just saying, yeah, I'll pray for you or, you know, in that moment in your heart praying for them, like just stopping with them in that moment and praying for them right there. Um, I want to get better at that. <laughs> I think that's so cool when people do that, just sort of interrupt life to pray for you when you bring just something stop. up. Like, yeah. man, there's no reason why we shouldn't do that. So mm-hmm. anyways, we're trying to get better at that. Just I think that's more thing. intentional. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the last part of this verse, he says, uh, Give thanks in all circumstances, or what does your say? Be thankful in all circumstances. Be thankful yeah. in all circumstances. So here's another way that Rachel's really good at this. This is why it's her life verse and not mine. Uh, we are opposites. I'm not um, perfect, though. So. I remember <laughs> I am definitely the pessimist in this relationship. <laughs> Rachel's the op- I mean, you could just tell by her faces, right? She's more, she's, <laughs> she's more optimistic than I am. Um, so she's definitely the half glass full kind of person um, where I definitely struggle, like always trying to see the positive side of things. Sometimes my mind, because I'm critical of myself and I, I'm, I evaluate that I'm a detailist. So I'm constantly looking at all the details and, and I never, I don't stop enough and really like thank God for what we do have and in, for what I'm grateful for in specific circumstances. Um, and Rachel's just really good at, really good at that is i mean i mean obviously she's not perfect um uh obviously (laughs) Uh, i mean but she's pretty close no i'm just kidding (laughs) but yeah she's really good at just like you know like pointing out what there is to be thankful for Mm -hmm. um and it's always always because of god right we are always the reason we have to be thankful in any circumstance is because of what god has done in our life by providing something through somebody, encouragement from someone, um, a reminder from his word, an answered prayer, a worship song that we love, uh, whatever it is, we're con- we, you can constantly find things throughout the day mm-hmm. to be thankful for, mm-hmm. um, always. And I know for some of us, that's a re- we have circumstances that are really hard. Mm-hmm. And it, and, but the truth of the matter is, is if we have Christ, if we have Jesus in our lives and we've given our lives to him, there's always a reason to be joyful. There's always things that we can pray about and there's always things to be thankful for. Um, and it's all about perspective. And I think when we're able to give um, thanks in all circumstances, um, it changes everything. And the, the way I love the way this verse ended because it says, this is God's will for your life, right? In, uh, well, in Christ yeah. Jesus. And it says, God's will for you who belong to Christ who belong Jesus. To so Christ. you belong to him. Yeah. Like, which is a super comforting thing. Yeah. And something to totally be thankful true. for. <laughs> Very true. And because we belong to him, he's coming back soon, and we should look forward to that. So Yay. if you ever if you want to know what God's will for your life is, it's to be joyful always, pray continuously, and give thanks in all circumstances. That's a good place to start. Um, and those are three easy things to to Mm -hmm. to focus on but sometimes difficult things to practice but um rachel is a good is a great testament in my life that those are three things that are really simple uh, that she's tried to live out Mm -hmm. and i've learned a lot from it and it does change your life it changes your day it changes your perspective so anyways that's rachel's life verse and that's what we wanted to share with you today i hope that was an encouragement sorry for such a long video (laughs) we're new at this um But can we pray for you real quick, and then um, we'll be on our way. Uh, Father God, thank you so much for today. Just thank you for all those that are watching Noah's Window. Thank you for their willingness to listen to us. And I just pray that they would be encouraged today. And uh, God, help us to remember to to always be living in anticipation of the fact that Jesus is coming back. So we have a reason to be joyful always because 
um, it's not over and and that one day you're gonna rescue us and you're gonna redeem the world and you're gonna make everything right and so just thank you for that um, thank you that we have a reason to be joyful uh, God help us to pray without ceasing to never stop praying to constantly throughout our day just lift people up lift our needs up um, and never stop running to you with what's going on in our lives but also um, just to be reminded of what we have because of you and to give thanks in all of our circumstances no matter good or bad. Um, and I know that's easier said than done, but God, the, the more we practice it with the small things, the easier it'll be when the more difficult things happen. So we just thank you for loving us. Thank you for all that you're doing. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next episode. Yep. Bye.